let us go with the acid flow. All right, you've got your attacker controlled packet coming in and the length is not fully attacker controlled because it's just gonna be however much packet data was received over the network. This has a whole bunch of code in it, which I left in there in order to throw you off the scent because most of this doesn't actually matter and I didn't want it to be too trivial. So when I cut out all of the code that doesn't matter, it does look pretty trivial. It looks like this. So you've got your attacker controlled packet plus some header size and that gives you your pointer to the IP header. Then down here, you've got the IP header plus some size is used as an input to this NC input packet. You've got your IP header UDP destination field is attacker controlled out of the packet. UDP source is attacker controlled out of the packet. And then we've got, that's right, acid math. And acid math is as bad as an acid bath. So the whole reason I didn't even bother to show you things like the structure for IDP, uh, sorry, IP and UDP packets is because you don't need to know the structure. All you need to know is that acid math is as bad as an acid bath. So this attack controlled value minus some hard-coded constant means that if the attacker sets this to a small value, it will integer underflow. So that means the size passed into this will be very big. And the same exact problem can occur here. Same integer underflow, same problem. Now when it comes to finding the source, you know, vulnerability, this is all I really wanted you to find. But if we go and examine this a little bit further, we can understand how this could potentially uh, lead to exploitable vulnerabilities. So there's the NC input packet, but there's also this function pointer usage right here, UDP packet handler. So if we find where UDP packet handler is set, it's set via F from set, uh, sorry, net set UDP handler. And where is net set UDP handler used? It's used in a whole bunch of different places throughout the code for this net console and boot P and DNS and fast boot and NFS, which is what we're caring about here, SNTP, TFTP, and Wacom LAN. So there's all sorts of different UDP packet handlers, which would all potentially be handed in extremely large length when they're called. So in the original research, they pointed out, you know, we did not audit all of the potential handlers. Uh, we just looked at the NFS handlers. So there you go. There's a potential place for the researchers to go look. I gave it a quick skim. I didn't see anything, but again, I was just quick skimming. I was like, oh, well, let's check if they found, you know, missed some easy, obvious thing but uh, I didn't see any easy, obvious things. But if you spend more time, maybe you will find some easy, obvious things. So the point is they said they audited the NFS handler. This last field, the length, is this thing that is integer underflowed and turned into an extremely large value. And subsequently that is, you know, passed into RPC reply lookup. Sorry, lookup reply. Another instance of RCP lookup reply. NFS mount reply, NFS unmount reply, and, you know, potentially some other places. So if we look at that first instance of things, NFS lookup reply, we've got the attacker controlled packet, attacker controlled length, and you don't have to look too far before you see a length and a packet data being used inside of a mem copy. And that should cause your exploity sense to tingle. Is it safe? It's not safe. This is our sweet potato case of these unbounded dangerous functions being used with attacker controlled sizes. And ultimately that will corrupt this. But of course, because this was an integer underflow and because it's an unsigned implicit integer, it's going to be a 32-bit value and that'll be an extremely large mem copy and that'll probably crash the system as opposed to achieve a attacker controlled value. But you don't know until you really get in there and see what all the other mitigating situations and circumstances are. So what was the fix for this? Well, up at the highest level when they're processing the IDP and UDP packets, they add in sanity checks to make sure that the UDP length is less than the UDP header size and the uh, UDP length is greater than the IP length. So that is a good sanity check. Although I will note there's this int up here that is a signed int and signed ints are kind of dangerous and you should slaughter that signed size, slaughter that signed int, make it unsigned but that's a future module. You'll learn in a future module about why leaving signed values like lengths, sizes, offsets is dangerous. But anyways, that's, that sanity check was sufficient for there. Then further down in things like the NFS handler, we've got the unsigned length. So that's good because that means that this length greater than size of the struct will successfully achieve what they're trying to achieve. Again, if it were signed, this would be a big problem, but thankfully this is not a signed value. 